I just go in and I go in and I bring my heart and I bring my body and I bring my mind. And then I try to make life out of this text and I try to connect with the people around me. And if they're good people and if I can connect with them, then it's something because then it's real in that moment and that's all I can do. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Katja Herbers is an actor. She sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. What is your entry point for a new character? Like, do you have a typical way in? Well, it all starts with the writing, right? So I can't say that I'm someone who understands my own technique in a way that I can explain what I do exactly, or that I find it, but I'm going to try to get over this as we talk about this, because I sometimes don't find it that interesting when actors talk about their choices, or I just prefer to not know much about actors, because there's it's nice to have a certain mystery. Yes. It kind of kills me a little bit, when, yes. you know. I mean, you sometimes now you see big stars who've won Oscars do like jumping jacks on Instagram. I'm like, please don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, yes. I like this mystery, but I also really like this podcast. And I and I do think that what you just described is your fear of, you know, maybe over explaining what you need from an actor as a director um, and thereby killing or, or just destroying something inside them that they're actually not going to give you a better performance. I think that happens very often. And I think now that I'm a little bit um, old, older and further along in my career, it happens to me less because I know how to like not listen, mm -hmm. which is a great tool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I know how to stroke a lot of men's egos <laughs> <laughs> yes. and make them think that it's their idea, you know, or something. So we can all feel good about something. Um, and, um, but just as a way in, I guess I try to find an emotional arc. Like what is someone, what's, what drives someone? Um, what are they afraid of? What do they need? Like very basic things. And then I just try to, sometimes it's very physical. Like I, I come from the theater, also Dutch and German theater that isn't so, um, not as naturalistic as most film. So sometimes we'd start something with, you know, a posture or something and just figure out how something moves and yeah. a character would come from that. I think with, um, with the kind of acting that I do in America, I'm Dutch, by the way. Um, I, uh, it's yeah, it's it's naturalistic mostly, and so um, I bring in, yeah, I guess I try to just put in my heart into whoever this person is. Yeah, um, and I try to fight for something. That I guess is a really good constant action, right? Fighting it keeps you um, active. Yeah, I think that's like, it's also a little bit of a American cliche, maybe, that we all need to be winners. You know? <laughs> yes. I think like in, 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 in yes. European culture, we, we are way more comfortable with watching losers and still finding that interesting. Yes. I think in America, we, we really need to see people succeed. Yes. Um, um, I, like, I like people who are very flawed and kind of, I also like people when they're a bit desperate <laughs> yeah. because it just asks for... Um, it can uh, allow for bigger and bolder choices. Mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. But fighting is good. I, I guess everyone's fighting for something, right, in life. That, that's good. Then I like fighting and losing. I yeah. don't necessarily need to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's probably much more interesting to play a loser, right? I mean, mm. just in terms of what you get to play. Maybe, yeah, but I guess they, they would need to have to get up all the time again and try again and fall flat on their face. Right, and maybe right, now right. it's a comedy, which is, which is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so w this is something I don't think I've, I've asked outright to uh, people who are not American actors who have yet made it here in America. Is it common when you know English as well as you do to, as you are deciding I want to be an actor actually professionally, do you start to 
have this focus on being successful in your country as opposed to being successful in America? Or does one lead to another? Like, is this something that you were having to try and figure out as a young person? Which one of those to kind of focus on or did, or did it all lead together? Um, no, it definitely did not. Um, I did have the, th- the thought very from a very young age, which is why um, my English is, is, I can play you know, it was an American accent. It, not when I don't, like now you'll probably hear it because I don't have any lines written for me. Um, but I, uh, yeah, used to, from a very young age, study this accent because I had it in my head that I wanted to act in America because all the movies and TV that I was seeing was from there. And I thought, okay, that wouldn't be a part of that. But um, as for me, it, it I guess some European actors are in a very successful European film or something, and then they get asked to be in an American film. I was never in such a film. So I basically just started over at 32 mm. in, in America. And it was like, no, nobody. It's like I didn't have a career. So, yeah, yeah. or I hadn't had, uh, I hadn't done what I had done in Holland. I was just absolutely nobody when I had a bit of, you know, people knew a little something that yeah. I did or something. Yeah. Um, it's not a sad story at all. It's actually really fun. It just made that I, uh, um, yeah, that I felt like I did my twenties twice or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But what is sad about that story is, is the lack of insight by the people that make things into like looking into somebody that's coming into the room next and see that maybe they might have, a bunch of skills in another country that might be useful to know uh, when you're trying to cast something <laughs> instead of <Right>. being like, <laughs> instead well, of just being that, like, this is a new person. They they just yeah. started acting at 32. <laughs> well, people do like new people, right? So yeah, that's right, fun. right, right. <laughs> they always trying to figure like who's the next something, something. Right. So that's fine. And then I guess the 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 fact that I had led um, movies and, and and like theater shows meant that I could audition kind of well. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, I think it all, it all plays together. I just didn't get like a, like a jump off point of a great movie that won an Oscar or something. Right. And is it, is it true that this role in evil was just given to you that you didn't really audition for it? Yeah, it's true. Um, they did want me to, well, they wanted me to read for the studio and the network or something. But I, I, I kept telling them I wouldn't do it, um, <laughs> which is like no is just such a powerful word. I, I was doing a movie here in Holland at the time, um, and I was just very busy. And I also thought the scene that they wanted me to do was a scene that I was most definitely going to fail at mm. and not be able to do well because it was one with, with one of the demons like mm. being over me that mm-hmm. wasn't actually there. So now you're acting, you know. Right. <laughs> um, So, uh, yeah, so I didn't. And then they were like, okay, well, then maybe we'll offer it to you uh, pending a meeting with the Kings. And so then the meeting was was really nice and we connected very nicely. And they did see all my work. So it wasn't like out of the blue. Um, And uh, they actually also saw some of my Dutch work, the Kings. They watched some, they needed somebody who was able to, yeah, to bring some um, lightness to this sometimes very dark world. So they watched some of my, I kind of come from comedy in Holland. Mm, so mm-hmm. they watched a few movies um, that I was in that were one that was kind of slapsticky <laughs> and mm. one that was like a romantic comedy, which was kind of stupid. But um, so I think that helped them. And then they asked me to chemistry read with my culture. And I again said, yeah, I'm not doing that. And then they were like, okay, well, <laughs> fuck it. Here you go. <laughs> how could we, how could no work so m- many times? Like I can understand well, maybe I no guess, working once, like on a fluke. You just keep using no. <laughs> well, I really kind of like just, I knew I wasn't I was gonna lose the part if I went because I was super tired. I was shooting this indie. I was shooting like sixteen hours a day. I was exhausted. Then I was gonna have to fly in on a whim, come back to film here. I think I was doing like rain shoots at night. I was just so tired, and I also thought I can. I know I can do this, but I'm going to fail if I go. And here's my show reel, and here's all the stuff yeah. I've done. And yeah. you know, if if you like me, then then do it. <laughs> Sometimes auditioning is also a little bit silly, yeah. Because I do think like auditioning is not how it's going to be on the day at right, all. Right. And so one of the things that I said no to was that um, 
you know, that reading, which I've never done, but I, I have friends who've done it for the studio and the network where you're in a theater. Mm, now you're yeah, in a theater, no which makes is, no sense. Yeah. Well, it's kind of absurd because also if you have theater background, you're going to, yeah, project. you know what that is, but right. they're filming you and it's on a screen. Right. I don't know. I, I just thought, uh, so dumb. I, I don't want to do it now. I kind of wish like maybe I, I had done it because then I at least have that experience. I don't could have been kind of funny, um, but I'm also kind of sure that I wouldn't have gotten it. So right. there you go. <laughs> but but were you worried? Because, you know, actors have talked about this where, where they've been offered a role and they didn't really audition. Then 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 this weird uh, kind of insecurity comes in on day one where they're like, oh, these people haven't actually seen my version of this yet. Was that a worry that came in? No, somehow no, because I did feel very connected to that character quite quickly. And I was able to prep it. Yeah, no, I just felt connected to the material and the character. And I wasn't, no, I didn't have that. I once, I did have with Westworld. I remember that's something I auditioned for. I remember on the first day I was terrified that I was going to get fired. Mm. I was terrified that they were going to like see me or something and go like wait <laughs> did we cast her I, we didn't mean to do that i'm sorry like i, I did i've had mm. i have had that for some reason with evil i didn't have that although i did think like during the camera test is when they're just looking at your face right and like mm. how to how do we light this person's face and look to the left look to the right that makes me very uncomfortable because then i'm not acting so now i'm just being looked at like she and then i and then you start to think stupid things like Oh my God, am I am I decent looking enough so that right, you know right, anyone right. will want to look at me on a TV screen? Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I have to be a lead of a show, and what does that mean? So that made me very insecure. But then the actual acting becomes active, and I I don't really suffer from um, knock on something, but like uh, from imposter syndrome because I yeah I just don't have that really. I'm just imagining if I was going to be the lead of a of a show. And I really connected with the character. I would still have this feeling like, I wonder if I'm putting all this work into it and the showrunner has an entirely different idea of this. And when are we going to come to a crossroads of this? Like, I would be so worried about going down this road of feeling comfortable without being in touch entirely with that person's idea of this and i can see how this thinking is actually counterproductive to what the actor needs to do they need to feel complete ownership of the character and that will actually be what the showrunner wants if they're a good showrunner but i can still imagine how this would be a problem for me how do you avoid that well when i talked to the kings uh, robert and michelle over skype when i was here in, in holland I did feel like we had a, uh, we laughed at each other's jokes. <laughs> like we genuinely laughed at each other's jokes. So I, I knew like, oh, okay, we got a similar sense of humor. I, 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 yeah, I just connected with them and I felt they connected with me. And so, yeah, I, I'd love to say that I was very worried about that, but I, but I really kind of wasn't. And I was also maybe at the fuck it stage, stage of my career where I was like, I'm, I'm just a pretty content person, maybe, maybe in general. And, and I count my blessings. So I thought like, okay, well, if somebody doesn't want me, it's fine. Like, I'll, yeah. Somebody else will want me or I don't know. I'm just, I'm here to give. I give a lot. I put my whole heart and body and everything into something. Sometimes I think like maybe I, I give too much because it's also very exhausting. But I, it's the only way I understand how to do it. And so I feel like that's a lot. I bring, I bring that. I bring all of me. And so if that's not enough, like, I can't change that. Yes. <laughs> so, and I think maybe sometimes people are like, you know, people who have certain um, um, feeling scared of failing or something has to do with, obviously I'm scared to fail, but not in a way where I sabotage myself, where I think, oh, um, I'm going to not prepare 100% so that if I do fail, I don't have to actually own the fact that I mm -hmm. am not good enough or whatever. I, I don't mean to sound like overly confident because I'm really not, but these aren't my my kind of worries. I just I just go in and then I go in and I bring my heart and I bring my body and I bring my mind. And then I try to make life out of this text and I try to connect with the people around me. And if they're good people and if I can connect with them, 
then it's something because then it's real in that moment and then that's all I can do. I'm imagining the experience of filling in backstory for this character, either consciously or unconsciously, or, or even just, just an emotional history that's not necessarily on the page that actors kind of have to do, whether it's a lot or just a little bit that they're not even aware of. I'm imagining the experience of like getting to episode 20 and reading something in a script that kind of changes that emotional history uh, must be a, a kind of a crazy kind of <laughs> frustrating and yet, oh, this is kind of what I need, but now I have to change. Now, th this changes my approach to her now. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk talk a little bit about that. Like, have you ever come across that? Is this just stuff that is just feeding you or is it stuff that's like, oh my God, uh, this is frustrating because I was just playing this like this this whole time. But I, I'm just so curious about that moment of like realization of like, okay, this has to change. Well, um, one, one director, one theater director I work with quite a bit in, in Belgium and in Germany, his name is Johan Simons. He, he said something really interesting to me, which was well, during rehearsals, he would, he would constantly just ask me to be someone else. But because he said, people are, are, a myriad of people nobody's any oh, one that's thing interesting. so so yeah um so in building a character he wasn't that interested in in you know a, a very understandable through line he was more interested in like shards of yeah of who these people were and then trust that the audience is also a way to treat your audience as you know an intelligent yes, audience yes. to make sense of yes. of the behavior well, it, that's not really something that worries me. I mean, I do have a funny story about um, a director who once thought that um, he, he'd kept it a secret from the person who was the spy in the story that they were, in fact, the spy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and um, he thought that he could have never gotten this brilliant performance from this actor had he told this actor that they were in fact the spy. Yeah, yeah. And then we were all sitting down at like in the green room and, and they were all there. And then he said, no, I, I, the casting director told me that I was the spy. And it was like, a, and so he said it was just great. So I don't believe in treating your actors like dummies. Right. I don't believe in, Maybe unless you're working with amateurs, right? Which maybe then you're then you're manipulating people. If you're working, right. if you've cast people who have technique and and are intelligent, and you know just the people who you want to work with, yeah. if they're professionals, like please don't keep information from us. Like, it's just stupid. That's a little silly. I find yes. that a little silly. And then the other thing that I find hard, um, maybe that I find the biggest challenge in in working is when you feel like a director thinks that they have to do it all mm. and that they're like God and they're like the creative whatever. And they're going to have to tell everyone, not just the actors, but also the TP also, you know, just everyone how to do their jobs. When I think what a good director is, is somebody who uses the creative um, uh, forces from from every single person on a set and then you can all make something together like m many people's creative energies together is obviously more than one person's so um, and I find it hard when directors try to uh, like micromanage mm -hmm. what an actor does it's just not it's all again maybe great if you're working with amateurs not great if you're working with people who you know every take try to figure out something else Right. Who are like on some kind of creative flow when they're acting so that the behavior is real, who don't anticipate what they're going to do. Something might actually come up in a take that they had no idea was going to happen. So if you tell an actor beforehand, like, hey, on that line, it might be good if you, I don't know, whatever, pick up that glass or start crying or whatever it can be. I'm like, why would you, why would you do that? It yeah. just makes it just makes the world so much smaller. And I think it, that's a bit silly, but some, for some actors and some directors, maybe that's a great way. Again, I think it's more like working with amateurs, which can lead to brilliant performances and great films, Absolutely. obviously. But. Yes. 
<laughs> there, there was a an article, or I guess an interview with you, where you were talking about the confession scene in, in the, the end of season two, and you oh, actually yeah. you actually said, "I work best when someone leaves me alone." <laughs> You know, meaning the director, I guess. And and the director knew yeah. that and kind of left you alone. But I want to know, like, because you've said that this in the beginning of the interview. It's almost like, I guess, anything that is said is going to have to be either ignored or translated into something else that you can use, right? I mean, like... Totally. Th that's th it. That's it, right? So it's like, it's probably best to just you know <laughs> realize that she needs to be left alone and can get there. Well, or not. Like, please speak up if I'm like going in the entire wrong direction or if you don't right. like it. But I think if you start off without looking at what a person has to offer, what their own creative impulse is, if you start off with talking during a rehearsal or saying like, I think th the scene is this, then you again will, you present yourself as God and you're not working with what other people might have thought of. And I always think of this, the, um, Tommy Schlamme, who I, I work with on Manhattan, who's just the most wonderful director and a great, great person. And he um, once gave someone a book on, he said, this is the best book about directing. And it was a book by a psychiatrist, um, Yalom. I don't know how you pronounce the name in English, but Irvin uh, Yalom. Jalom. Um, and um, uh, it's called Love Executioner. It's a beautiful book. Mm, you should read it. Yeah. He says, this is the best book about directing because this psychiatrist who, in the book, you see different chapters on different patients that he has. And he, he describes these patients' uh, uh, therapy yeah. in, quite, in, in quite a big detail. And But in every chapter, he learns as much from the patient as the patient learns from him. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's what a good director is. A good director learns as much from his actors as the actor learns from the director. Yes. And so I think you have to have curiosity in the people who you've cast. If you don't, if you don't have that, like, <laughs> why do you cast them? I don't know. Just go make animation or something. I, don't right, know. Right. I think it often comes from insecurity because the very good directors, maybe I, I, I mean, I haven't worked with Fincher and I know he's extremely meticulous yeah. That's something else. You know, he has a huge artistic vision and he knows exactly what it wants. I would love to work with him. I'm all for it. Yeah. But if you're like just making television, if people come in and if they then come in and start to, you know, sort of dictate what you have to do, it's just, it, it, for me, it's counterproductive. Yeah. I, I'd love to hear what other actors think. I will listen to your podcast and, yeah, and find that's out. It. <laughs> that's it. There's a nice library of this and lo lots of Fincher talk too. Oh, on yeah. there of all different kinds of <laughs> various frustrations and lo yes. loves of him. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a question I'll probably cut out because it's unfair to ask. I don't think that this is true of all the great actors. I don't see you acting. Like I sometimes try to be aware, like let me try and see her acting. It looks absolutely effortless. There are some people you're like, you almost see them acting, but you love it anyway. Totally, totally. I'm ba basically yeah. asking you, why am I seeing effortlessness in you? I mean, I think I, <laughs> I, I think uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't. I myself don't like feeling that I'm. Although sometimes, like I'll I'll approach something very musically, and it's definitely very technical what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, or even with that confession scene um, that you mentioned, like. I did have an idea for a physicality of it, which was kind of like what you see people do Ooh, in, yeah. in, 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 in grieving people. So they sometimes yeah. like hit, hit themselves. And I, and I did think like something like that has to, so, so, wow. so I'm, I'm definitely putting in a lot of effort yeah. <laughs> to make it good. Um, but, uh, but then I, I, I don't feel honest if I feel the effort while yes. I'm doing it. I need to feel that it's just, coming out of me naturally and that I'm coming up with it in the moment, which is also why directors who tell me exactly what they want when kills me a little yes. because then there's a roadmap instead of exactly. um, like yes. something that can just be a different, have a different shape each take. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Is there, is there some way that like if they really needed you to pick up that glass, is there some way for Oh, that? I'll pick up the glass. I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing all that kind of stuff all well, the time. Well, sure. But I'm saying no. like if if they if I wanted to 
not tell you to pick up the glass because I didn't want to have this through line ruined. Oh, well, picking up the glass <laughs> is really the wrong example that I gave there because picking up the glass is just a thing that you need to do yeah, or put it I guess, down and, you know, you need to like do yeah. continuity and that's all totally fine. What, what I object to is like before a rehearsal, before you see what an actor has to offer, yeah. that you come in with your idea of what the scene is, thereby sort of overriding some freedom in their brain to come up with stuff with your, you know, probably yes. a bit smaller idea than what the actor has been working on because they've been internalizing that's it. That's right. You know, right. so that's kind of like, please just let an actor rehearse it. Yeah. And, and yeah. rehearsing on our set is just, you know, blocking it. Basically, we, we, we have almost no rehearsal time. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, I'm not opposed to notes at all. I'm just opposed to not paying attention to what your actor brings. Yes, yes. And not yes. using that to your advantage to make something beautiful because I think the authenticity, if an actor is able to bring that, that's worth everything. Yes, yes. Even, yes, it, it's taken me so long to come to this because even like something I just filmed recently that I, I, I it, we had, there were so many technical uh, issues and so many space issues that I just immediately just told them where to stand that would be best for the camera because there was no other real way to doing it. And I still but see this, but I still see this this um, tension in the scene that's wrong. What I'm saying is like, it's if I had just let them do it wherever they wanted to do it, it would have been a little bit worse for the camera, but I wouldn't have that tension in there. And I would like, it would, it would get me what I needed. Well, don't you think like standing, telling someone where to stand, that's really quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, know, but you're making that... me think, and other actors have, the very first thing should be them just finding it. If it doesn't work entirely, if it, if, or, yeah. you know, then, then you can, but that agency yeah. at the very beginning is so important, right? As a currency, as a creative currency. Yeah, maybe. So maybe like what you could have done is like, okay, let's, let's just run it through and see, how see it feels. what happens yeah. again. Yeah, like, go now where you want. It, then you say like, do you think it would be possible to be there right. while doing what that's you were doing? Second. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But that's, but it, it's so, it's so interesting that like people wouldn't realize by now <laughs> that this kind of creativity, this kind of ownership of space is so important for actors, like to, to ignite their uh, uh, imagination about the, this character that they've been thinking about for days or weeks. You know what I mean? And they've been thinking about the scene. Yeah. Like with the confession scene, like it was very important that I was left alone because in order to be connected to my emotion in that way if i would have had to have dealt with you know whatever the director thinks that that should be like how am i going to access this so i'm coming in with 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 all my stuff yes and 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 alethea jones who directed that episode who's wonderful um and who i'd worked with uh, on a previous episode or the elevator episode which was also a very good episode i thought um she she really she she made that space for me and then mike and i my culture who plays david acosta and i we we kind of just found that blocking together also within the physicality because i had to we had to we knew that we were gonna have to end up kissing but it was how do you get to the hug and mm -hmm. so we kind of just blocked that out together and then what Alethea did, which I think what a good director does, is like she figures out how do I set up the camera in a way that yeah. also tells this story. Yes. Yeah. But if she had come in and told me, so you're very upset that you've killed a man <laughs> and now you're here and your white privilege or, is, uh, you know, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> or, you think I don't know that? You know, you, you'll be surprised how many people will say, like, so remember last season you've done, uh, you've killed someone? I'm like, yeah. Yep, I remember. <laughs> well, sometimes you got to translate what a director means by something. And I've gotten right. better at that, I think. I used to work with a Dutch director, a theater director. I did a lot of like, Chekhov and Schnitzer plays with him. And he's the kind of director who will actually speak your lines for you. Whoa. And you have to mimic how oh, they geez. sound. I'm not kidding. And a lot of actors go absolutely stir crazy from this guy. Yeah. 
He has, however, perfect pitch for <laughs> the no, for the like the emotional through line of people. Right. And whatever he says is so entirely great and so entirely complex and wonderful that it really, really works. If you've established a certain chemistry and a certain language with a director, which can really be anything, because this director who told me exactly what to do, when to touch someone, how to speak, is one of my favorite directors ever. Interesting. So so it also it differs, right? And I, I would feel I would end up feeling very free within um, the plays that we made together, because also what it did, which was great, was it forced me outside of my own, you know, mm -hmm. intuition. I was now in his brain. Mm -hmm. It was just a really, I'd love to do it again. I love that. That's so um, interesting. But he could do it because he's a genius. I was just going to say, the, the, <laughs> the important part there is that he was right about this emotional uh -oh. thing and pitch and everything exactly yeah. like the way it should, you know, it should yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, and then the funny thing is, like, some actors would mimic what he, what he did, and they would do it right, but they wouldn't bring, you know, their bodies, their hearts, their That's heads, their, it, they wouldn't be able to ground it. And he'd be like, no, that doesn't sound right. And then he'd change oh, it. Whoa. Be, because he needed it to, so if you couldn't yeah. translate it to be in your body, he would it would hear, like, yes. off pitch to him, and he would just start... So many, that many actors committed suicide Th on his uh, <laughs> But that <laughs> sounds like there's some kind of genius to that. There is some kind yeah. of genius to that, but it's also slightly, obviously, slightly, um, slightly crazy oh, that, yes. Oh, yes. that you don't translate that into something else sometimes if you see that it's clearly not working for an actor. Yeah, yeah. but that's such an interesting example that you're giving because you would think based on what you're saying that that wouldn't work for you because of how oh, no, restricted it. it is. Yes. Wait, yeah. let's talk about, before before we leave, let's talk about the law firm of Shuck, Gray, Croco, and Knapp, which are your character's yes. children in... <laughs> I love that you call them the law firm. Because <laughs> it sounds like a law That's firm. so good. Shuck, Gray, Croco, and Knapp. I want to yeah. go there when I have uh, my car injury. Uh <laughs> I am fascinated by these kids, with, and I haven't seen season three, so I'm sure they're in college now. <laughs> but you rarely see kids acting like kids in things. Mm. And I'm imagining this must be a really great for an adult actor to be working with these kids. Am I right? I oh, mean, it's it, wonderful. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it must fuel wonderful. your work. It does. It really, it's, it's yeah, I, I, I love them so much. And I think that testament to how, how this is written, um, they're... Like when you see in the script, it just says daughters, and then you see their lines, <laughs> and it's all talking together. And then on the day, we'll like divide who says what, oh. um, and you know they'll improvise some stuff with it often. Right. And Robert King grew up, I think, with seven siblings, and so this oh is what God. it sounded like in his in his house. Yes. <laughs> so, and it just it just sounds real. Like that's that that's what I you know respond to it just sounds like the way it doesn't yeah. sound like it doesn't get it's not getting old with like oh this just sounds manufactured uh uh no you know it's also i think how we how we behave on set um and how sort of free they they're allowed to stay you know yes. if if you start if there is somebody who starts micromanaging them for instance also not a great idea you know right. Right. So, like, we keep it loose. You got to keep it loose. Yeah, um, yeah. Is there something that you do when you're not working that kind of feeds this creative part of you, this inner actor uh, that just, you know, kind of nourishes the part of you that needs to, to play? It's so hard. That's really a struggle. I mean, I like helping friends with self tapes because then at least I get to act a little bit. Um, I like going like yesterday, for instance, I went to a reading of a friend who has a new play. I like that. And then just talking about how, and I also like uh, thinking about how to start a revolution uh, around uh, climate change <laughs> and uh, get rid of the Supreme court. Um, yes. but I, I don't think that has to do with acting at all. Um, it's a certain it fuel. Does, it's a certain fuel. I I don't know. It's just that we're in such a we're in a difficult situation. So I, I joined Extinction Rebellion. Everyone who listens should look it up. So it's, it's a great organization, and we we do need to 
save our, our home, save our planet. Um, and so I do think like in the, in the times when I'm not working or I'm just auditioning for things, um, to keep myself sane, I do a bit of activism. Katja Herbers, thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.